We're one crisis away from life-changing events. Folks, this is just so true. There are so many things that are going on in this world, in this country. You have the media. They're hiding the truth. When we don't know the truth or what is truly happening out there and what is truly going on, it's hard to prepare. A lot of people won't prepare. They only prepare when something major or drastic is about to happen. And that's exactly what they want. They want an uninformed, unprepared, and a frightened population to make sure that they have control. You see, they can control us with food, with money, with jobs. And that's what can happen. If something happens and the government, all of a sudden, you woke up one morning and your money is worth nothing, what are you going to do? Do you have a plan? Think about this, folks. Because this is no longer a theory. This is something that is written on the walls. And a lot of analysts and a lot of very high people with a lot of knowledge are predicting this to happen. The inflation is just going through the roof. The inflation rate is just unbelievable, folks. We're going to get to that in just a minute. A lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about today... I will be putting down in the description links so that you can go in and read a lot of these articles for yourself. So I did the homework for you. As I've always talked about, you need to make sure you're keeping yourself up to date and what is going on because the corporate media out there, they're not going to tell you everything that you do need to know. Everybody would like to keep us uninformed, unprepared, and frightened because this way here, it's easier to control and rule the population, if you get what I'm saying. If a lot of people, or a lot of Americans even, really knew what the government was doing, if we truly knew the truth that our leaders say that they're doing and what they're really doing, the truth would be so bad it would turn this country upside down. People would be so angry, so fed up. It wouldn't be a good thing. The media doesn't help the situation either. Think about this, folks. All right. So many people out there believe that everything will be fine because the media tells them that. Not to worry about anything that is coming down the pike. Go to the grocery store. You can look at the shelves yourself and see these are not that stocked anymore. Prices are actually going up and going through the roof. Meat prices have gone astronomically high. It's getting to the point where people can't even afford chicken anymore. So that's why you need to be prepared. Because once the clouds roll in and the darkness settles in, they got you. And most people are going to be left with nothing but desperation and fear. And you don't want to be part of that. There's no reason to be. A lot of people just don't understand that the whole world, all the governments and everything else, they're all in cahoots together with each other. And that everything is rapidly spiraling out of control. Our country, unfortunately, is headed into some dark times. Some painful times, Take folks. A look at the lines there last week. But if I you're mean, ready, this sink in. in advance, the food bank serves eight before those days. Of food to people in need every if day. the collapse actually they the happens are so high, they of have any to type, ration food. you won't go down with it. Hopefully, you can survive it. Let's talk about some of these supermarkets now. Some of these supermarkets out here, they're stockpiling inventory as food costs rise. They're stockpiling. Grocers are setting aside large amounts of frozen meats and sugars and all these other items to protect their profits ahead of anticipated price increases. They know the prices are going through the roof. They're raising them. Everything is going up. But they want to make sure that they're protecting their number one thing, the almighty dollar. Because so many of these companies and people are so addicted to that almighty dollar. 
Some super supermarkets said they are buying and storing supplies to keep their shelves full amid stronger demand. Grocery sales in the U.S. for the week ending June 19th rose about 15% from two years earlier and increased 0.5% from a year earlier, according to the Jefferies and Nelson IQ data. Stockpiling by food retailers is driving shortages of some staples, grocery industry executives said, and is challenging a U.S. food supply chain already squeezed so tight by transportation costs, labor pressures, and ingredient constraints. The move is a reversal from last year when consumers hoarding, now they, they use that word hoarding, folks, groceries because of concerns about food availability and all the disruption of the food industry. Now, retailers themselves are stockpiling to keep costs down and protect their margins, their money. But I really find it real interesting how when the American people want to do this, they're hoarding. But when the actual supermarkets want to do this, they're stockpiling. What's the difference? What would really happen if the U.S. collapsed? If the U.S. economy collapsed, you would likely lose access to credit. Banks would close. Demand would outstrip supply of food, gas, and other necessities. You, you couldn't get stuff. It wouldn't be there. If the collapse affected any type of local government or utilities, then your water and electricity probably would no longer be available. I did mention inflation rate went up 5.39% in June. The unemployment rate is at 5.9%. And we are over $28 trillion in debt. Surging prices from used cars, gasoline, food, and airlines are driving the jump in the inflation. I'll give you just a few. Used cars and trucks are up 45.2%. Gasoline, all types, 45.1%. Fuel oil, 44%. 0.5%. Other motor fuels, such as your oils and those type of things, are up 32.1%. Propane, kerosene, and firewood is up 17.7%. And moving, storage, and freight expenses are up 17.3%. Now, I know there's a lot of states out there where their unemployment rates are not too bad. And other states, well, they're not too good. You know, Hawaii sets off the top at 10.2. California is number two at 9.0. Those are some of the big hitters. There's quite a few states that are in like the 3% range. You have uh, Vermont at 3.2, Wisconsin 3.8, Utah 3.1. You know, so it just depends on where you live and what kind of a uh, uh, population I believe that you would definitely have. Let's talk a little bit about some of the things that are really going on right now. As of July 25th, there's those several large fires in the Northwest, Northern Rockies, Northern California, areas of burn actively yesterday. This is of July 25th, folks. The Dixie Fire in Northern California reported extreme fire behavior and has gained nearly 14,000 acres currently. 86 large fires have burned more than 1,498,000 acres in 12 states. They have issued a National Preparedness Level number 5, which means anybody that is in the Forest Service that has anything to do with fighting fires is on the front lines. They have over 22,200 firefighters and management teams on all these different fires, and they are taxed to the max. These people are trying to save people's homes, businesses, the forest and everything else and they're battling something that they just can't seem to get control of call it climate change call it whatever you wish there's something going on but the government isn't telling us anything they don't even want to get involved but they may if something actually does take place and I'm talking about the Hoover Dam, Lake Mead, and this part of the country out west. Even with these 
adaptions that they're looking to do and how they want to start pulling restrictions. The decline of Lake Mead has caused the amount of the hydropower generated by the dam to drop to about 25%. The drought is expected to cause the hydro facility at Lake Orville, California to completely shut down, prompting a warning from the United States Energy Association that a mega induced electricity shortage could be catastrophic finally the government is acknowledging there's a problem affecting everything from food production to industrial manufacturing the association added that such a scenario could even force people to move east in what they called a reverse Dust Bowl Exodus. Now, if you all don't know what the Dust Bowl and everything was about, you can go back and watch one of my videos. I did a video on the Great Dust Bowl. I also did a video on the Great Depression. They kind of go hand in hand in what we're dealing with here, folks. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. There's a lot of things that are going to be happening. We have no control over some of this stuff. And it's not just here in this country. We're not the only ones that are dealing with all this. We're not the only ones eating the pie. The whole world is. You have all these huge floods, dams failing and everything in China. Look what happened in Germany. All those huge floods are getting amounts of rain that they've never had and never been recorded in history. Fires are burning throughout the world. In different parts of the world. We're having problems getting goods transported from point A to point B, whether it be through container ships, whether it be through tractor trailers. There's a shortage of employees and the government created that. But is that all part of their plan? I'm telling you folks, the time to prepare is now. The time for you to really set back, make a plan, and make sure that you're putting this in place and you're being ready is now. Your time is running low. We're one crisis away, folks, from something that we probably really don't want to be a part of. And it's very scary. We need to be prepared now. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Until next time, I will catch you all on the flip side. Mm -hmm.